Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Thanks for checking out the channel. This is Ham Radio Dude, and today we're going to take a look at yet another portable antenna solution. Again, I say this all the time, but this one I really do like and will probably be one of my daily drivers. The JPC-12 Portable Antenna Solution. So let's actually just go out and set it up and talk about it while we set it up. Oh, and by the way, I'll be switching between multiple days of testing. So if you get confused on why I'm wearing different clothes and different scenes, it's because there's multiple days. I do want to talk about how lightweight this antenna is here as I show it to you. So it's uh, about three pounds, 3.1 pounds. And that's with everything that's included, the case, the antenna, the radio wires. Uh, it's very lightweight. The quality of the case is nice, and it costs 101 U.S. dollars. Uh, so what do you get for that? Let's take a look here. Well, you get a few things, and I do want to just kind of express how good the quality is on everything. For example, this is where your SO239 goes, and then it's an adapter for the antenna elements, as well as your ground spike, which is included. It's an, alu an aluminum-style ground spike. It's pretty nice, and uh, what, what it does is it would just screw in here. But... I also want to make a note before I do any of that, that there's a nice groove texture on the metal on this SL239 connector so that when you have the ground spike in there, you can spike it into the ground. All right, story time. <laughs> You're probably taking a look here and noticing that this is completely disassembled. Well, why is that? I like to test things and I am very hard on things when I test them because A, I'm kind of reckless, but more importantly, if I don't test these things, and kind of be a little bit hard on them, how could I tell you that it's a reliable product? And so in this case, when I actually got this, I noticed that this carbon fiber tube was kind of moving around just a little bit, and I thought it was kind of weird, didn't put a lot of consideration and thought into it. But what happened was, is when I had the extension pieces on here and the spike in the ground, I decided foolishly to grab the extension pieces and pull this whole thing out of the ground. The ground kind of froze a little bit during the time I was out there, so it was difficult. And then these two things separated. When they separated, the, the wire right here actually separated from the SO239 here. So all I really have to do is just go ahead, put the wire back in, solder the SO239 here, and then screw everything back in. I'm actually kind of impressed that it's that easy to uh, fix if there's a problem but also I'll probably add maybe a little glue or something here to try to make it a little bit more uh, rugged, if you will. I do want to actually point out one more thing. So um, earlier I was talking about these little extender pieces, right? And they're made of aluminum, but really I should mention that they are part of the antenna system. So when you screw all of them in, what you have is a center loaded coil antenna system. You have your telescoping antenna up here, you have the coil, and then the second part of the antenna here. I, I suppose if you wanted to, what you could do is you could maybe have like a 17 foot antenna, okay? And then the coil, and then have it directly screwing into your ground spike or your, your main base piece here. And basically then what you're doing is having a base loaded uh, antenna. I haven't tested this, but I do want to just point out that these are critical for being able to properly tune on 40 meters and 14 meters with the antenna that's provided. Uh, well, actually, whoops, that should be this way. And uh, that does provide another bit of information here that is fun to kind of point out. That's why we see this portion as carbon fiber and some kind of plastic, because this is acting as an insulator. If we didn't have this here, or rather if it was like metal, what it would do is it would uh, be connecting both the inner portion of the SO239 to the outer shield portion of the SO239, or more so our radial or slash counterpoise would become part of the antenna at that point. In between the ground spike and the SO239 connector piece, we'll put our radial wires. And our radial wires came in an IDE style kinda uh, bundle of, of cable, which I separated. And in order to use the cables you just take this which was already installed it's a little ring terminal and you put it on your ground spike section and then you screw that SO239 portion in and then all you got to do is spike this in the ground now the ground is frozen and it's been raining but it's going in there kind of okay I could imagine that if there was sand it might be a little bit loose but here we are looks pretty pretty good right here 
So then what we would do is we'd spread out our radial wires and we'd spread them out evenly in each direction. I'll do that in just a few moments. But the next thing that we would really want to do is we're going to take all four of these little what we call extension pieces that are also made of aluminum and we're going to put them together and then we're going to screw it on here. So I'll be right back. Again, the quality on this thing is pretty remarkable for aluminum. It's a, it seems like a good quality aluminum. All right, there are four elements here to this extension piece. And now that we have each of these four on, we're going to go install it back on that SO239 connector. All right, now we got two more easy things to do, and we'll talk about those as well. But basically, we put the coil on the extender pieces and then the antenna on top. And I'll show you how the coil works here once we get it set up. Actually, I think I could do this here. So you got this coil, and there's a, a male portion on the coil as well as a female portion. The male portion is going to go into the extender. It's the only way it could really go. And then it just screws on. As you can see how nice it screws on. This setup is taking me less than five minutes, and you got to recognize that I'm doing camera angles and stuff too, so it should take me longer in theory. But then we put the antenna on. Now this is a short little antenna, however, it just screws right on. I'll show you a little possible hack for the antenna later we'll try out. Once we have this all in place here, take a step back and that's what it looks like, right? Uh, we'll extend our antenna out. Be kind of gentle with this antenna, actually the quality seems okay especially as opposed to some of the other ones I purchased in the past. But um, we're just going to go ahead and extend this out fully. All right, my hands are super cold. So real quick, I want to show you these two markings here. Okay, there's this one and there's this one. 40 meters is on the bottom and then 20 meters is on the top. So in between would be like, you know, 30 meters. If you go past this, this is going to be like 12 meters and then 10 meters, 6 meters. And if you go all the way to the top and you're still not resonant on like 6 meters or 10 meters, then you adjust the antenna itself by bringing it down, by shortening it. Because, of course, when you go higher in frequency, the antenna gets shorter. So my hands are freezing. Let's go talk more in the car and activate some parks. Before I also get started, so yesterday I made contacts. 40 meters wasn't too good, but 20 meters, I made like 113 contacts in just over an hour. It was Support Your Parks weekend. I get all that stuff. It was a North American QSO party. But regardless, I don't think that you could discredit that because a lot of people are going to be using this antenna for just those purposes. Parks on the air, North American QSO party, all that good stuff. This morning, I went ahead and I set everything up. I'm tuned up for roughly around 40 meters. I haven't quite checked. But that does actually kind of pose another thing I want to mention. You should have some sort of antenna analyzer with you when you're doing this because 40 meters is a very narrow bandwidth. And if you're trying to tune it by just looking at the, <laughs> the radio and tuning up and keying up, you might actually miss where it is and you might get frustrated. So have yourself the proper equipment. With that being said, I was just checking and I noticed that this is actually 1.5 to 1 or below on the 2 meter band. So happy little accident I suppose and that's with the coil tuned at the 40 meter mark. <clears throat> also I probably want to mention that today I'm operating only 50 watts of power and the purpose on that is is I like to conserve battery. Now where it gets even better is I, I followed the instructions in the manual briefly. I set this up quickly and then there's markings on there so i went to the 40 meter marking and i'll be surprised if the 40 meter marking doesn't show a 1.4 to 1 standing wave ratio at 7 megahertz now we're going to operate around 7.175 and it goes up to about 2.6 so all i have to do is go out there and shorten the antenna slightly i'll be right back actually probably shorten the coil slightly one click up and what that did is it shortened the antenna well all it take took was one click and i'm at 1.3 to 1 at 7.260 Park Kilo 1012 QRZ. 
Let's give it a couple more goes here on 40. It's Whiskey Niner, Foxtrot, 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 W9FFF calling CQ Parks on the air from Park Kilo 1012. W9FFF from Park Kilo 1012. What did we see there? Well, we saw that we made a couple of contacts, Ohio, uh, just down the road about 20 miles. And I think that what we're seeing again is the same thing we saw with the last coil antenna that we reviewed. When you have these compromises, the lower you go in the bands, the more compromised you are and the more difficult it's going to be to make contact. So I'm going to go adjust everything for 20 meters and we're going to try some contacts on 20 meters, parks on the air. We're at around 1.2 to 1 and all I had to do was just change that little uh, coil and click it till it was at the red line for 20 meters or 14 megahertz. This is uh, probably the easiest antenna that I've ever set up. Kilo 2, Oscar, Romeo, Charlie, I have you at a 5-2, 5 by 2 here in northern Illinois. Roger on the 5x6, thanks a lot and have a great day. It's uh, Whiskey Niner, Foxtrot, 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 73 to you on QRZ. Park to park, Kilo Charlie 3, park to park. Kilo Charlie 3, park to park, go ahead. Hey, good afternoon, Sean, uh, this is Kilo Charlie 3, Sierra Zulu Hotel. My park number is Kilo 8851, and I got you a nice 5x9, QSL. 73 to you, this is Whiskey Niner, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Foxtrot for parks on the air from Kilo 1012, QRZ. Roger, Roger, you're 5-5 five, five into North Carolina. That uh, Kilo 5 Yankee, Victor Yankee. USL is Joe Brett, 5-9 in Mississippi shot. We got about 110 contacts in just over an hour. Uh, this antenna is remarkable for what it is. I know there's atmospheric conditions. I know that this is Support Your Parks weekend. I know it's the North American QSO party, but uh, this little guy did the job here and uh, this little coil, and then we got our little whip. Uh, I had a great time. Let's go back to the house though, where it's a little bit warmer. So actually I ended up going back out to the park the next morning, which as I'm recording is this morning. Let me talk about yesterday's activation real quick. Some of my very notable contacts yesterday were I made Hawaii on 20 meters and I made Spain on 20 meters, both with 50 watts, which I think was pretty phenomenal. I had a good time with that. But today I actually ended up going back out to the park and I wanted to try all the activating again. And I wanted to see if I could do just as well without a support your parks week weekend, without a QSO party weekend. And I actually ended up doing fine. So 40 meters, I made about six to seven contacts in, uh, I would say actually about a 15 minute period. Then I went over to 20 meters, 20 meters I was doing great on. Then I decided to switch over to the 10 meters and on 10 meters I did okay, but I made contact to two United Kingdom stations. So that was pretty uh, phenomenal and remarkable. One of the other things I want to mention, though, is uh, that antenna that screws in to the coil, it's not your typical 3 a 24 slot thread. However, there are antennas you could purchase on LA Express that are 17 feet long, and I have one of those antennas. So in the future, I'll probably end up trying to screw in the 17 foot antenna with the coil just to see what I can get. Anyway, I think this is a phenomenal antenna. I had a blast making this video. I'm gonna carry this thing around a lot more and uh, hopefully in the future, I'll be able to compare it to something like a buddy pole. As I know, there's probably gonna be some people asking, is this just a buddy pole? And I don't know the answer yet, but uh, stay tuned, maybe we'll find out. Thanks a lot for watching, take care.